Recursion is a powerful programming tool, but it can also be a real memory hog. The problem is that every time a function recurses, that is, every time a function calls itself, a new chunk of memory is used up. Now, to understand why that is, you have to know a little bit about how function calls in general work. Every time a function is called, its internal state, that is, the values of its variables and arguments, is saved in a chunk of memory called a stack frame. And that is added onto the top of an area of memory called the stack. Now, normally, that stack frame is removed when each function exits, so the stack usually shouldn't get very big. But when a function calls itself recursively, the stack could, in theory, grow very big indeed, because every time the function calls itself, a new stack frame is added. But those frames are never removed because the function may call itself 10, 100, or a million times and never exit. So how is that solved? One way is to reuse the same stack frame, the same chunk of memory, each time the function calls itself, rather than adding a new frame to the stack each time. And that's called tail recursion. Let's look at an example. This is a simple C program in which I call the function named add and pass to it the integer 0. The function then adds 1 to that number each time it's called. Having added 1 to the initial 0, it calls itself with this new value 1. Then it adds 1 to that and calls itself again with the new value 2 and so on. This carries on until number 6 when this test condition becomes false and the recursion ends, and this next line is then executed after each of the recursion function calls. Now let's look at this in the Visual Studio debugger. Well, I've run the debugger now, you can see that it's hit this breakpoint. Now the call stack window down here shows me whenever a new stack frame is added, one frame for each function call. And the locals window shows me the value of the num argument. I've put a breakpoint so that the debugging will stop to let me look at the stack and the value of num as the function is repeatedly called. Now here's the first function call and num is equal to zero. And now I'm going to continue debugging in Visual Studio. I just press F5 and that runs again and hits the breakpoint when the function is called recursively. And you can see there's a new stack frame that's been added and the value of num is one. Let me carry on debugging and another recursive function call uh, executes and the uh, value of num is two and another stack frame has been added and so on. So if I carry on just debugging, you can see this each time the uh, call stack window shows me that a new stack frame, here we go, is added. And again, and finally up to here. So you can see that now there are one, two, three, four, five, six stack frames shown in the call stack window, and the value of num is five. So the function has called itself recursively while this condition is true. Now, you can see all of these stack frames, you can monitor them in the debugging as I've done in this window here. And now the uh, num, the test num is uh, less than six will fail. So if I carry on debugging, that function exits straight away and watch the call stack window. And there goes a uh, stack frame, it's been removed. And now the line with the printf, this line here, uh, executes, and as I carry on debugging, then that breakpoint will be hit repeatedly and the stack frames will be one after another removed one by one until the whole program ends. Now six or seven or 10 or 20 stack frames is no big deal. But in principle, I could be counting the stars in the sky or the pixels in a Hollywood movie, something absolutely vast. And if I create a stack frame for each function call, I'll eventually run out of stack space. Fortunately, most languages know this is a problem and behind the scenes, they may be able to do a fix up 
using tail recursion. Tail recursion is typically only done when the recursive call is the last executable line of code in a function. That's why it's called tail recursion. The recursive function call is done at the end or tail of the function. Now in my code here, the last executable line in the add function is the printf. So let me change that. So I'm going to put the uh, recursive function call after the printf. So that is now the uh, last executable line of my function and I'll save it and now let me try running it again and see what difference it makes. So here we can see that I've got the call to the add function and a stat frame is added and num is equal to zero and I'll carry on debugging, press F5, num goes up to one but there is no new frame added to the call stack press the F5 again to carry on debugging and you can see that it goes up to two. So I, all these function calls are in fact happening as before, but the same stack frame is being reused. Let me just carry on doing this and you can see that as it goes, each time it's called, there it goes, right up to the end the same stack frame is reused. Now tail recursion is an optimization technique and by default it's very probable that your compiler already uses it in some circumstances when you compile your program for release. In fact, when debugging, the Microsoft C compiler disables tail recursion and other optimizations. So even though tail recursion might be enabled in the final or release version of my program, well, I wouldn't normally see tail recursion being used in the debugger. That's because the debugger deliberately avoids many optimizations so that I can see the maximum amount of information when debugging. In fact, here I specifically had to turn on optimizations in order to show this effect in my video. If I select the project here, you can see the relevant optimizations in project properties. I go to project properties, C, C++, optimization, and I had to set maximum optimization to favor size. And then to stop it complaining about that, I also had to go into code generation and set basic runtime checks to default. Tail recursion is more important to understand and use in some languages rather than in others. As I said, C typically takes care of this kind of optimization without my having to know what it's doing. In languages such as Java and C Sharp, you may never be aware of how recursive calls are optimized. However, if you're using highly recursive languages such as Lisp, Scheme, some functional languages or Prolog, well, you really do need to pay close attention to tail recursion. Prolog, for example, may use recursion in list processing where a language like C or C Sharp would use iteration in, for example, a while or for loop. In Prolog, loop, loops such as that are often done recursively and it can be important to optimize your code for tail recursion. At any rate, it's worth knowing about because even though you may not need to use it very often, tail recursion very often, well, one day it may help you to understand and fix stack overflows which otherwise would seem totally inexplicable.